What is a postulate? Something that cannot be uh, proven. If something can be proven, it's a theory, in a theory. Postulates are the building blocks of a theory. So that is what continuum mechanics has some building blocks. And one of them are the Cauchy's postulate. What does postulate say? Well, first, the extension of the traction concept to the interior of the, po of the body. So we said that in principle, as we, we said here, traction is something that is defined only on the exterior of the body. Okay? What is the way to extend this concept to the interior of the body? Well, there is one possibility. Imagine I had the original body and I split uh, that body into two parts by a surface S, which can be a straight, plane, or curved, passing for a certain point P. Automatically, what do I have? Two different bodies, two different volume, uh, material volumes. So every one of them can now be considered a volume, a material volume, and then, of course, those, those I can consider that the, the right-hand side uh, body will make some forces to the uh, left-hand side body on every point of the surface. Now S is part of the boundary of this left-hand side body, so I can just talk about a theoretically existing traction vector over every point of the splitting surface uh, according to the normal, well, I mean, which is splitted with a surface that at this point P, which is the same here and there, has a normal N in this side and the old world normal minus N on this side. Okay? So that's a way of conceptually extending the concept of traction for vector to the interior of the body. So we can talk now about traction vectors at the interior of points, of, 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 of volumes, of uh, bodies. How? Well, by considering that there is a surface that can pass through that point, and this surface sp splits the body into two parts, and then, according to that, this is the, we can define a traction vector for that. But my point is, how many surfaces passes, pass through that point? How many, do you think? Infinite. Infinite. And look, how many surfaces pass through that point having the same normal n at this point? Uh, you are thinking of a straight surface, plane surface. But you could think about curved surface, surfaces. So if I consider a surface cutting, cutting the, the, the point, the, the, the body, into two parts, then, of course, I can cut through a straightforward surface, but I can cut through curved surface. And at a po certain point, they could have, have the same normal. So there are infinite surfaces that cut the, that point having the same normal n. Okay? Well, looking at that, in principle, the, traction, the resulting traction vector would have to depend on what? First, on what is the point, of course. If I change the point, then the splitting of two bodies are different, the interacting forces are different, and so on. Okay. Second, they should depend only on the surface. What is the type of surface? Okay, so one surface can change the other. And they should depend also on the normal of this surface at the point P. Well, what says, what is the Cauchy's first postulate say? It says that the traction vector at the point depends only on that point and the normal, but not on the surface that cuts it. So, two surfaces having the same normal at the point that they consider point P result into the same traction. That's not trivial. That cannot be proved. That is a postulate, an abstract postulate. And that's why postulates are, are somehow the, 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 the building blocks of theories. Because that is something that one is, is not trivial. If it's trivial, anyone can do it. But the genius just find genial, uh, genius postulates. And that is the postulate. So it is regard, the, like the cutting of this surface is done by different surfaces, all then having the same normal, the traction vector doesn't change. That's important. That's important. But of course, if I keep the point constant and I change the orientation, the normal at these points, of course, the traction vector will change.
okay? The cutting will be split into different bodies, and that, and that will change, okay? But it doesn't depend on the surface. And the second, the second uh, postulate, so-called the Cauchy's reciprocal theorem, says the following. What happens about this traction vector, the one having as, in, as resulting of the actions, the contact actions of this part with respect to that, at, point, at that left-hand side, or the, the traction vector in here? At the same point, but at the other side, resulting as the actions of this part with respect to that. Okay, they both depend on the point P, and this corresponds to the force N, the normal N, and then by construction, the normal here is minus N, by construction. The old world normal is minus N, because the, the, the surface is the same, the, in that sense, uh, the, the, surface, the, the normal is N, this is minus N. So what he said, which is not trivial anymore, but it's a little more physical, because it's related to the, the, the third Newton's law, the principle of action and reaction. You know, we know from physics, from mechanics, that if I do a certain force on this body, this body is doing on, on my hand an uh, equal force in, in modulus, different uh, sense uh, action, which is the reaction. This is not, we are not talking about forces, we are talking about traction vectors. But you can now understand that what Cauchy postulated is that P, at this point here, when I change the normal, if instead of considering the normal, I consider minus N, so I'm considering the traction on this part of the body, the change of the tractions changed as changing the normal. Okay? That is something which is a postulated. We don't need any proof. That's a postulate for our theory. 